Hi everybody and welcome back to episode 67 of the Xena Super Duty build. I hope you guys liked episode 66. That was kind of fun to do. Now I legitimately could not find this hammer anywhere. Like I said, it's always in this orange toolbox and I looked all over my hanger for it and couldn't find it. Found out later it was down in my basement because I was using it down there. But the thief in my video was Brian, my neighbor, who's glass air guy on YouTube. And what's interesting is when I was editing that video and I put the overlay over it to make it look black and white and I put, you know, camera one or something up in the top to make it look like a security footage. I noticed that Brian is either a very, very skilled actor or he may have some experience in breaking and entering. All right, in this video, I'm going to continue my work on the uh, windshield for the Super Duty. Yesterday, I got the top trimmed, and today I'm gonna get the bottom trimmed and do a little bit more fitting. Now, for some of the following clips here, I had the audio set incorrectly, so it sounds a little bit weird. So I apologize for that. All right, what I worked on yesterday was getting this area cut out around the spar here on both sides. And you can see there's plenty of overlap as we come down the side here. There will be about a good half an inch taken off of here. Um, same with the other side. But the one area I did want to show you is in the front. You can see right now, the front of the windshield comes down to just in front of this row of rivets <clears throat> that uh, rivets on the firewall. And what I'm going to do is trim about what would that be? Maybe about a half inch off the whole bottom of this because I want to move this back. I want to make it behind this row of rivets. There's plenty of room uh, up here to do that with those two tubes. And it's just a little bit too far forward for me. It actually goes back a little bit because the, the top is kind of coming forward. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this off, trim about a half inch off the, the whole bottom. That way it'll fit behind these rivets, which will actually make it fit a little bit better. Now to make a nice even half inch line around the bottom of that windshield, I've made this little jig here, which is just made out of some tongue depressors. You guys know I'm a part-time medical doctor when I'm not flying at the airline. So, um, so you can see I have one, one tab here that'll ride along the bottom and then the pen will make a mark on the windshield. So let's do it. Well, here you can see I have a nice line going all the way around the bottom. And the next step is just to cut that last half an inch off. Well, that little cordless Dremel is nice for some things, but it wasn't powerful enough to do this. It was just kept stalling out and stopping. So now I'm using my, my original Dremel, but I also want to point out, I, I did stop and put on eye protection in case that, that grinder bit breaks. And also I wore my painter's respirator mask too, because when you're doing this, it really puts off some toxic fumes that you just don't want to be breathing in. After I was done grinding that, or cutting that bottom half inch off, I just took some rough sandpaper and I'm sanding the edges here. And I'm not trying to sand it to make it a perfectly smooth edge because I know I'm gonna to have to trim this again. I'm just basically taking off the burrs from the corners so it doesn't scratch the aluminum and it's easier to work with. Well, after cleaning all the dust off, the next step is to put it back on the airplane and see how it looks. 
All right, I think it's fitting pretty nice now. I like this a lot better. You can see on the front here, this used to come down almost right on this row of rivets. And now it sits a little bit behind there, which is nice. It does seem to fit nicely along the side of the, the fuselage or around the whole curve here. You know, once this is attached here, it'll hold the, the front end nicely. There's obviously a lot more trimming I have to do. Uh, and if you'll notice, this, this cut isn't perfect. It's, it's a little bit wavy along the front. And I'm not worried about that at all because like I said, I'm gonna be trimming more of it off. And then once I do the final trim, I'll show you how I make this a real nice, perfect, smooth line instead of being a little bit wavy like that. Um, so I can kind of mark off here where, the, uh, where I need to cut it on the back. So, so the back end on both sides will need to be trimmed. All right, let's look at the pilot side here. I've removed some of the tape so that we can see this. And you know, up here, there's probably about a three eighths of an inch I need to cut off. And as you go down towards the bottom, here's where it needs to be cut, right at the back of this piece. So there's a, that's about almost an inch and a quarter right there. So there's a lot to be cut off on the pilot side. And when we look at the passenger side, up top here, there's about a half an inch to cut off, but look at the bottom here. The bottom is actually just a tad short because it should come back at least to the back of this. Um, that's just how it's cut from the factory. I don't know if Zenith cuts these or whoever makes these cuts them, but I do wish that they would leave a little bit more on here. Uh, for example, on my cruiser, you know, I had to cut off an inch or two from the back, uh, which is good because it really lets you get it fit and trimmed how you need it. So for this one, because it, it is trimmed uneven, you, there's a lot more on that side than there is on this side. To move this back a little bit, what I need to do is cut off a little bit more from the bottom front and then that will allow it to go back more. So what I've done is I've put this black electrical tape on here, starting from about here, you can see there's just about an eighth of an inch or so around the bottom there that I'm gonna trim off. Well, one thing I wanted to point out on the top is you can see how nice and even it is with this bar. So the, the windshield is on here straight. It's just that when they trimmed it, they, uh, they left a lot more material on this side than they did on the passenger side. Now, when I make the smaller cuts or trims along the side and bottom, I, I like to use this little sanding drum and I can just go and you know, grind off the little bit that I need. So this is what I'm gonna to use to trim the bottom now. All right, with this bottom trimmed a little bit more, you can see on the side how it moved back here. Now I have enough material here to where I can draw another line, even with a tube, and I'll go ahead and trim both sides here. And you can see how much I have to trim off. I mean, it's gotta come all the way up to about there like that. So I think the front is pretty much done. I do need to even it up a little bit, but I can trim the two sides and then, it, then I need to figure out the bottom here where I need to cut the bottom. Well, let's see where we're at. I cut off both edges here using the same, same techniques I showed you before. So now I have this aft edge trimmed just even with the black tube all the way down. It's perfectly even on both sides. And I'm real happy with how the front of the, the windshield fits around the fuselage. It really, really fits nice. It sticks up just a little bit, but you know, none of this is secured down yet. And there's probably, you know, I don't know, a good inch or two, or not a two inches, maybe an inch and a half that needs cut off around the bottom yet. So this is gonna fit real nice on here. And uh, I think I'm probably gonna wind up making a fiberglass fairing for this again. You know, the only problem with making the fairing is I can't do that until this skin is riveted on. 
because I need to have all these rivets in place so that the fiberglass lays up over the rivets. Um, but anyway, if I can at least get this all fit, and like I said, the top drilled with a top window put on, get these drilled into the side tubes with, their, with the aluminum piece that goes on the edge, all that will be done and ready for final installation. All right, so this is a good stopping point for me. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. I've been out here since I think 6.30 or 7. And I'm getting hungry, I wanna eat, and I wanna to get to the gym. Then when I come back, um, I'll probably start working on, it'll be the next video, but I'll start working on these metal trim pieces here uh, and then probably the top window. The same time I'm doing this, I am trying to get some work done on the pits. Uh, we started taking the mags apart on there and I'm putting it all back together because we wanna check each of the spark plugs and run the engine and see if we can get that figured out. Uh, I did buy a parachute at Oshkosh this year and it was supposed to be sent out to me on the 17th of this month. And as normal with the supply issues, they're running behind. So I don't need the shoot yet, but it'd be nice to have, but I really wanna get that pits uh, ready to fly for the springtime. So that's all I have for you in this video. I've got a lot of time off coming up, so I'm gonna to try to put out a video every day that I'm in the hangar working, and uh, I guess we'll see how much I can get done by the end of the year.